Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Red. Videos today from men only. Modern women are out to end Midtown, but it's hitting them where their hurts. Again, their pockets. Please extra them below. I really appreciate that. See that child. It's child time. Tell me why is it so challenging to find emotionally intelligent, available men? I'm starting to think, like, I'm too picky. No and shit. And by this rate, baby, I think I'm going to be single for a long time. Oh, and that's okay. Like, I love myself. And I really do need someone that's going to be obsessed with me in a healthy way, just the way I feel about myself. Obsession is never usually a healthy thing. <laughs> I love me, so you should love me too. It's funny how some women ask a question and answer it themselves, right? thinking they've nailed the issue. She'll find that special someone once she gets smarter and learns to embody traits that emotionally intelligent men value. Emotionally intelligent men stay away from certain types of women. She will find him once she learns to be selfless, humble, feminine, soft, and marriageable. The truth is, men are emotionally intelligent towards women they genuinely want to bond with. If she isn't finding these men, it's because she's not truly available. True. She might think she is, but she's too absorbed in herself to let anybody else be into her. She sounds toxic, with a red flag appearing in less than two minutes of conversation. Pretty much. She comes off as a headache to date, perpetuating the stereotype that women often blame others while being easily influenced by societal trends. All some women think about all day is men. Yet... They complain about not finding emotionally available and intelligent men who are literally everywhere. The problem is, these men are avoiding women who exhibit toxic behaviors and attitudes. Well, I mean, to them, emotionally intelligent means just you don't act on your emotions and you just let them do whatever they want. That's what they want emotional intelligence to be. About 70% of men have stopped dating or dealing with women altogether. Men are emotionally intelligent. But the version of a man she encounters depends on his intentions. If men sense that a woman isn't worth the effort, they remain closed off. Statistics show that 50% of women today are expected to be single and childless for life. We can thank feminism, narcissism, social media, lack of femininity, unrealistic expectations, bad attitudes, and the refusal to embrace traditional roles for this trend. Modern women, in many cases, are not perceived as marriage material. Marriage and dating... This is why I always say it, guys. Oops. There are some modern women in these countries, too. There's modern women everywhere. But you have a much, much better chance to catch that freaking, you know, bluefin tuna in other seas. Just saying them long term are increasingly seen as inappropriate choices for men who value peace and stability. Women need to learn from older generations if they want to be the kind of wife men desire. Modern women often miss the mark when it comes to embodying the qualities that make for a good partner. If she wants to be a wife men want to marry, she should take cues from her grandmother's generation. Modern women, by and large, are not wives. The Hell focus no. should be on being genuinely available, selfless, humble, feminine, and soft. If she can't... Or they don't even qualify to be mothers. The only thing, the only reason they are mothers is because there's men out there that just shooting their loads in them. Or won't do that. She might as well get herself a cat and chill. In the end, the blame falls squarely on women who refuse to see the need for change in their attitudes and behaviors. Men are not the problem. The problem lies in the refusal to adapt and grow into someone worth committing to. Men have adapted and grown very, very well to this modern era. That's why Midtow is the best adapt adaptation for men, plus passport bros. Everything else is a bit of danger. Danger. Yo, what is up with men? And I know this is always a topic. And what specific topic is this video going to be about? Here, but I'm generally speaking about why do men have a hard time helping women? They don't have a hard time no, helping don't. women, but they've been told to leave women alone. Something that I have observed, not only in my personal life, but literally in the outside world, because I'm a watcher. Men will stand there. The women will have all the bags, the kids, the suitcases, the luggage. She'll be doing everything, and he's just standing there. I wonder, did she ask for help? They'll just be standing there, like, just watching the woman suffer, as if it brings them some kind of pleasure. 
from my perspective, it looks like that because I'll just be looking and I'm just like, anybody would help that woman right now. Why are you just standing there? Y'all are the men. If y'all would help that woman, then why don't you help that woman? Why aren't you doing it? You're still expecting that man to do it. When you yourself saying, if you would have saw it, you would do it. So you're lying. I guess some women do need men after all, if for nothing more than to carry heavy objects. But I guess one didn't take into consideration that a lot of men stopped helping women because whenever they do, many times they're often told that they're not doing it right. They're yeah. doing it wrong. <laughs> and the woman will just redo it anyway after making the man feel about one inch tall. Gee, I can't imagine why more men wouldn't want to help out. I've noticed that these posts creeps. are almost always by women in their early to mid 20s. Yep. They're too young to understand the history behind why men act as they do today. Men are sick of being accused of unnecessary things and labeled unfairly. Just because I'm a man doesn't mean I'm your servant. If women want help, maybe they should ask the bear for it because men do not owe women anything. Rawr. If you want to know why men are acting a certain way, look around at how women are treating them. Let's put the blame where it belongs. Women have created an environment where men feel constantly scrutinized and judged. From false accusations to unrealistic expectations, men are fed up with the double standards. Men are told to be respectful and considerate, yet when they are, they're labeled as weak or not masculine enough. Lames. On the other hand, if they assert themselves, they're accused of being toxic or oppressive. It's a no-win situation. Consider this. Men today are more cautious than ever. They've seen too many stories of men being falsely accused, publicly shamed, or taken advantage of. Social media is full of posts where women ridicule men for the smallest of things, turning genuine gestures into memes and jokes. It's no wonder men are pulling back. They're tired of being put under a microscope where every action is dissected and criticized. Yeah. And let's talk about entitlement. Many women expect men to go above and beyond for them without offering anything in return. And it's like they expect that on the first date before you even get to know the person. Maybe you chatted a little bit on, you know, text, but you really don't know a person just through text, especially when you first are meeting. They want men to chase them, pay for everything, and cater to their needs while dismissing men's desires and feelings. This one-sided dynamic is exhausting and demoralizing for men who are looking for mutual respect and partnership. When men do offer help or show interest, they're often met with suspicion or outright hostility. The narrative that men are inherently predatory has made genuine acts of kindness or interest seem sinister. Yeah. This has led to a climate where men feel it's safer to do nothing than to risk being labeled a creep or worse. Moreover, like, I'm sure there's still a lot of men that offer women help constantly, but they're not good looking men and they get destroyed as soon as they offer it. The women just look at them like, ew. Over. The expectations placed on men are often unrealistic and unfair. They're expected to be financially stable, emotionally available, physically fit, and endlessly patient. <laughs> Meanwhile, women are encouraged... That endlessly patient part is the, the hardest part, in my opinion. <laughs> ...encouraged to focus on their own empowerment and independence, often at the expense of building meaningful connections with men. This imbalance creates resentment and further drives men away. It's time to acknowledge that men are not the problem. The societal expectations and the way men are treated are the real issues. If women want men to be more open, supportive, and engaged, they need to start treating men with the respect and fairness they demand for themselves. Correct. Women should understand that men are human beings with their own struggles and insecurities. Instead of viewing men as either threats or servants, they should see them as potential partners and allies. Mutual respect and understanding should be the foundation of any relationship. Okay, I'm going to say something that's really cliche. I know people say this all the time. There's thousands of fucking songs written about it. There's hundreds of movies made about it. But breakups are so weird. You literally go from talking to someone every day to then nothing. Poof. They're gone. Huh? What? Where'd you go? They never existed. It's like they never existed. Kinda. You literally talk to someone, build a foundation with them, you love them, you kiss them, you touch them, you miss them, you want to be with them and see them and laugh with them and do all these things. And then one day you both decide it doesn't work and then it's done. And then you literally don't talk to them ever again. Or maybe you do, you stay friends. I don't know your situation, but I can't be friends with my exes. That's just fucking weird. But like, what the fuck? 
And it's not like you can do that with your friend. Like you can't talk to your friends the same way that you talk to your intimate partner. It's just, it is completely different. I don't care what anyone says. True. Sure, I talk to my girlfriends about stuff that I probably wouldn't talk to my boyfriend about with, but it's still different. There's like this fucking deep connection that you have with an intimate partner and then you no just shit. can't get that back. And then you have to fucking date again, eventually. Yeah. And fucking start all over. It's exhausting. No shit. It's exhausting. I'm 27 and I'm exhausted. I don't want to fucking do that again. Okay? I'm getting desensitized over the years. Same. To this fucking heartbreak. Yes, I'm sad. I'm devastated. But I'm fucking angry that it keeps happening. I'm so angry. And I'm over it. And like... Like I said, like, you talk to them every day. And then you just stop talking to them. And it's like weird. What? What? And then you have to mute their stories. Mute their posts. Maybe maybe even block them. Because it fucking kills you. It kills me. It kills me. To think about my ex-boyfriend. Doing better. Finding someone new. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart. It's always like that. But it just didn't work. And now we just don't talk anymore. And I was just like, what? She, she on, she's only making this video and complaining about everything is because he's doing better now and he has someone. If he wasn't, she wouldn't give a fuck. Where'd you go? It's devastating. It's tragic. If you're going through it, I'm so sorry. Let's go through it together. Let's get real here. This is a classic example of what happens when you base your approach on looks and physical traits. If you're chasing chads, you can't expect different <clears throat> results. The truth is, if you keep going for the same type of guy, the tall, handsome, smooth-talking types, you're going to end up with the same disappointments. So, let's break it down. Women often complain about being ghosted or treated poorly by men they're attracted to. But here's the thing. Those men often know they have options and aren't looking for anything serious. They might give you attention, but it's fleeting because they know there's always another option waiting. If you keep prioritizing looks and surface level qualities, you're setting yourself up for a cycle of brief flings and inevitable disappointment. The same thing for you men. All you care about is looks and having a big ass and big titties. You're going to go through the exact same shit. And it's not just about the initial attraction. When you're blinded by someone's physical appeal, you might overlook red flags or incompatible values. You might excuse behavior that you wouldn't tolerate from someone less attractive. This creates a dynamic where you're more invested in someone who isn't as committed or respectful as you deserve. Yep. Women need to understand that if they want a meaningful, lasting relationship, they need to look beyond the surface. It's about finding someone who matches your values, respects you, and is willing to invest in a future together. Physical attraction is important, sure, but it shouldn't be the sole criteria. Consider this. I mean, you just gotta... For women, it's almost the end-all, be-all. They're much more harsh on looks than we are. We are much more willing to, to date down in looks. I tell you guys all the time. She's a four, but she gets everything else that I want. Fuck yeah, she's gonna be way better than an eight to me. A guy who might not be a Chad in the looks department could have the qualities that make for a great partner. He might be loyal, kind, supportive, and ready to build a life together. But if you're constantly overlooking these men because they don't fit a certain physical mold, you're missing out on potential lasting happiness. Mm -hmm. It's time to reassess priorities. Instead of focusing on height, muscles, or any other physical trait, start looking for qualities that matter in the long run. Look for kindness, stability, ambition, and a shared vision for the future. These are the traits that will sustain a relationship, not just in the honeymoon phase, but through the ups and downs of life. Women often talk about wanting a good guy, but then go for the guys who don't treat them well. Nope. This creates a paradox where the good guys get overlooked, and the cycle of disappointment continues. It's about breaking that cycle and giving the good guys a chance. The ones who might not have the six-pack, but have a heart of gold and a readiness to commit. Ultimately, it's about being realistic and self-aware. If you find yourself repeatedly disappointed by the same type of guy, it's time to change your approach. Broaden your horizons and give different types of men a chance. You might be surprised at what you find when you look beyond the surface. So ladies, take this as a wake-up call. Stop chasing after chads and expecting different results. Look for depth, character, and compatibility. It's about finding someone who sees you for who you are and values you beyond your looks. Because in the end, a meaningful relationship is built on much more than just physical attraction. It's built on mutual- Dude, physical attraction can't build a relationship. 
what the fuck is it really going to do in the end? <laughs> it's all about your fucking morals, your foundation, what you want to achieve in the future together. If you have both family oriented, looks does nothing other than the genes you're going to pass down to your kids. Will respect, shared values, and genuine connection. Every day since we moved in together, I have woken up to a text message that says, Good morning, my love. I hope you have an amazing day. The only day I don't get this is on Sunday because he's off. Also, every morning he kisses me on my forehead. It's not anything crazy, but it's like enough to not wake me up too much, but just a little bit to know like, I love you. So what did I get this morning? Absolutely nothing. Not a text message, not a kiss, not a phone call, not a notification, not a pat on the shoulder. Who hurt you? What did I do to you? Wow. Who hurt you? This is you this is our fault, man. This is his fault. He bred the entitlement into her that she expected these things every single day. And when the man didn't do it, who hurt you? <laughs> Are we fighting? Are you mad at me? Do you not love me anymore? Are we not married? Are we divorced? Where is the heck to a girl when you need her? No, in all seriousness, it's not because he just suddenly doesn't love you. It's most likely because he was stressed or running late, but there is a slight chance that maybe he's upset at you. And if that's the case, True. the best question to ask yourself is not what have you done to him, it's what haven't you been doing for him. Damn, maybe we do need the heck to a girl. All right, all right let's talk about something real. As men, there are days when we just wake up and feel down. Everything we've held back hits us like a wave as soon as we open our eyes. We don't talk about it. We don't complain. We just try to get through the day in silence. Maybe the real issue is that women take it for granted. If you have good buddies, talk to your buddies. I know exactly what this man is talking about. Yeah, there's times I wake up and just waves of emotions hit us that we've been suppressing for God knows who long, how long, you know? But it's always nice to be able to have someone to discuss some things with, shoot things back and forth with, especially when it comes to these emotions that we freaking feel ourselves. And don't show that they value what we do. Reciprocation is the key to continuation, but somehow that seems to get lost. It's easy to say that men should just open up more, but the reality is that society doesn't give us that space. No. Women expect emotional availability, yet when men... No, they expect emotional intelligence. ...try to express their vulnerabilities, it often goes unappreciated or even ignored. Instead of support, we get dismissed. Men carry a lot on their shoulders. We're expected to be providers, protectors, and emotional rocks. But what happens when we need support? Silence. We just push through bottle it up, and carry on because admitting we're struggling often leads to being seen as weak or incapable. Women want... Guys, I struggle all the time with this YouTube and doing things in life. Just trying to figure things out, merch, you know, trying to start a new channel with another creator, trying another podcast, things like that. I, I'm fucking stressed. I, I fucking do so much things. There's so much things crossing my mind. I've never really conveyed it to people. I'm no, I don't really convey it to my friends. I don't convey it to any women I date or anything like that. It's it's better. It's just better that way, in my opinion, from what I've noticed myself personally. The more you share sometimes the struggles with even your friends and stuff, it, it also breaks this facade. Even my friends think I'm some kind of oh you know like guru or something in youtube because i'm doing okay in youtube but they don't see the the amount of work that goes into youtube they don't see all of the sacrifices i do to to, to make this youtube work and stuff and they will never they will never understand most people will never understand the work ethic that i put in they never understand that i have to do the five videos every day if i don't do it i'm a piece of shit and that's how I literally feel about it. If I'm a piece of shit, 
how am I going to be able to present myself to you guys and, you know, make you guys see some of the advices I give if you guys all think I'm a piece of shit. And if I think I'm a piece of shit, you know, others might think I'm a piece of shit. So what do I do? I try my best to work away from being a piece of shit. Want men to be sensitive and understanding, but they fail to see that this is a two-way street. If a woman doesn't show that she values and appreciates the efforts a man makes, why should he continue to put in that effort? It's not about wanting praise or accolades. It's about feeling valued. When a man's efforts are met with indifference, it chips away at his motivation and self-worth. Women often talk about the need for men to be more communicative, but they don't realize that men do communicate, just not in the same way. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. When a man gets up every day and goes to work, takes care of his family, and supports his partner, he's communicating his love and commitment. If yeah, those right. actions go unnoticed, it's only natural for him to feel unappreciated and undervalued. The truth is, women need to step up and show that they value what men do. Reciprocation means recognizing and appreciating the little things, understanding that men have bad days too, yeah. and providing the emotional support they seek from their partners. It's about creating a balanced relationship where both parties feel seen and valued. Women need to realize that a man's silence doesn't mean he's okay. It's a coping mechanism, a way to deal with the overwhelming pressures he faces. True. Instead of assuming everything is fine, they should take the time to ask, to listen, and to support. But even then, guys, I know as men, we don't even want to share or support. There's, I've had women that I've dated that ask me, you know, like, oh, sh you know, tell me what's going on and all these things. I just don't want to share. Personally, I don't enjoy sharing, especially with a woman. A pelt. I barely share, barely enjoy sharing, or I'm okay with sharing with my best friends. I don't even talk to them about certain topics or certain issues. Just us men, certain topics, we just don't want to share. We don't want you to know about these things at all. It's not about solving his problems, but about being there for him, showing that his efforts are recognized and appreciated. I have a question for men. Because mm -hmm. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. How is it that you can find a woman attractive online? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You look at her pictures. You read her profile. Something catches your eye mm -hmm. and you reach out and you message her. Um, then she sees that you've messaged her and she messages you back okay. and you start talking back and forth and things are going well. Go on. And then all of a sudden it's, Hey, let's go. Let's meet for a drink. Okay. Right? Okay. Sure. So let's meet for a drink. You go for a drink. You're laughing. You're talking. You're having a good time. Um, you, you do realize that this is like all from your own perspective only. Maybe it's not part of the man's perspective also. You may be having a good time, but he may not be. Everything's going well. You're getting to know each other a little bit better. Um, and everything that he says, I like. Everything I say, he likes. End of the night comes and you have this amazing kiss. Like an amazing kiss. There's no insinuation that he wants sex, so you don't even offer sex. But you have a really nice kiss. Then you each go your own ways. And the next day, you, meaning me, becomes a piece of shit. A piece of shit that it's not even worth a text message anymore, or even a response to a text message, or even to read my text message. All Women put so much emphasis on these things. Why do you think that you're just a piece of shit? He might have just not liked you. That's it. He did not enjoy the time as much as you enjoyed the time. If he didn't, why would he contact you? This is the part where I like the ghosting for men and women. I don't think ghosting is that bad, to tell you the truth. Ghosting automatically tells you that person's intention. They don't want to deal with you anymore. Just move on. All of a sudden, I've become disgusting. Hmm. I'm just curious. Like, it's so crazy that they go from one spectrum to the other spectrum so quickly. From everything was wonderful, great, now he doesn't text me, I'm a piece of shit. No, girl, he just might not have liked you. You might still be a great person. Why? Why? Is it because you're dating 600 other women? Well, so what? 
date those fucking women. I don't give a shit. See? But at least have the courtesy and the decency to be a grown up and say, hey, you know what? I'm not really into you. I'm not catching your vibe. Is that so hard? Why? So you can be upset and make another TikTok about it saying that, you know, it was a wonderful day, but he didn't see me as a maid, blah, 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 blah. Either way, he's getting posted on TikTok. To do? Fucking coward. This usually happens you only when he cowards. sees your red flags in that first meeting, which are so obvious and uncompromisable that he doesn't want to waste any more time on you. Or he probably just came to his senses and realized it's not worth the effort. It's just like what women do, right? They Google our names and do a whole background check and all shit. Once we see you and then you show us your Instagram and you show us your TikToks and stuff, guess what we're going to do that night? We're probably going to go look at it. And if we see you posting stupid shit like this about your dates and all your relationships and stuff, guess what, girl? Bye-bye. Let's be honest. Women today aren't worth it anymore. They're just walking red flags. Women don't like it when it happens to them, but they do it to men all the time. It's just funny how these women go for chads and become mad when things don't go their way. The reality is, men are increasingly aware of the red flags women exhibit. They're not willing to invest their time. I do admit, because of the internet and feminism, men have realized that these are red flags now. Before, men were clueless. An effort into someone who shows signs of being problematic from the start. Modern women often have unrealistic expectations, a sense of entitlement, and a lack of accountability. They expect men to meet their high standards while offering little in return. Men see through this and opt out early. Women often blame men for not committing or for ghosting them, but they fail to see their own role in this dynamic. They go for the chads, the men who are attractive and charming but not necessarily committed or interested in a serious relationship. When these men don't stick around, women feel hurt and blame men as a whole, instead of recognizing their own poor choices and the red flags they ignored. Moreover, women frequently ghost men or reject them harshly, often without consent. I want to say women do it to men way more. There's a group of men that do it to women all the time. The Chads, the Tyros, and the Pookies. But there's only like 10% of those men, maybe even 5% of those men that do that. Women do it across the board to all men. Considering how it affects the other person. They expect men to take it in stride. But when the roles are reversed, they can't handle the rejection. This double standard is glaringly evident and frustrating for men who are genuinely looking for a meaningful connection. Men have become more discerning and protective of their emotional well-being. They're no longer willing to jump through hoops for women who don't appreciate them or who bring more drama than value to the relationship. It's a survival mechanism in a dating landscape that has become increasingly treacherous. Women need to understand that men have options too, and they're not going to settle for someone who brings more problems than peace. Women just literally have no empathy. As much as we say women are the more empathetic, they, they, they can literally not place themselves into our shoes. They cannot feel and experience things that we are going through. They really can't. But for some reason, us men are able to do it, aren't we? Please subscribe them below. I really appreciate that. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.